four months ago at the Brooklyn Peace Fair, we, the North Fork People of Conscience, a small group of activists from the North Fork of Long Island, installed the Honor the Fallen Memorial, an exhibition of large panels, each holding the names, faces, and obituaries of 18 American soldiers who have been killed in Iraq and Afghanistan. At that time, there were 160 panels. Today, there are many more. Leah, a senior at Brooklyn Friends School, who volunteered to help with the installation, contacted us a week or so later to ask if we would consider bringing the exhibition to her school. What you are about to see is the end of this story. You will see the panels in the hallways of the high school where they remained for three days and you will hear the students and teachers talk about the effect the exhibition had on them. All the North Fork people of conscience are the custodians of the exhibition this project represents a wonderfully harmonious collaboration between us, the Peace and Social Action Group at Brooklyn Friends School, and Conscience Films, whose dedication, sensitivity, and skill produce this documentary for us. I helped set it up on Sunday, and I was working mainly on the third floor, and by the time we had one wall completely done, I just kind of took a step back to look at it, and I, I really didn't think that I was going to get really sad and emotional about it, but I, I didn't get sad. I just, I got really angry. And honestly, like, I haven't followed up that much with the war. I know what is going on, but like um, Larissa said, the girls are quicker meeting. Like, I haven't really let myself understand exactly like, what it means. And but you, you became angry because? Because it's, it's so many people, and this is nothing compared to what it is. Like, it really isn't. And I wasn't looking at the faces and like reading the ones as like, oh, this was a soldier. And it's true, like you think soldiers choose to go to war and they choose to fight for their country, but no, like these are regular people. And they're like what has the outcome of this war been? A lot of people are wondering then what's the good of it? This is the outcome, that's it. Like nothing has been resolved except a lot, a lot of people have died. So after two days Today's Wednesday. Are you still angry, or have your emotions changed? Or? I mean, I have be like I've gotten used to seeing it. I don't notice it as much as the, as the days have gone on. But I like still when I'm walking through the hallway, so I'll like I'll read like, oh wow, this person died on my friend's birthday. Yeah. So initially I was surprised, but you know it wasn't it wasn't for the reason that you know I was surprised to see all these faces because I feel like. As children, you know, or as teenagers in like, the age that we live in, I just feel like we've been really, really desensitized, like to this sort of violence and to the stuff that we see. Because in the media every day, we do see like lots of images of death and stuff, and we see reports from war. And it, it, I feel like it's kind of lost on us. The issues don't really matter in our country anymore. It's sort of boiled down to just like party versus party, Democrat versus Republican. Um, and it's like people just see the world in two colors, like I said before. They see the world in red and blue. And it's not really even about the issues anymore. It's not about the people who died or about why we're in the war. It's just about sort of proving your point, almost. Personally, I didn't like, I didn't like this. When I first came in there one day, I didn't like having seen, especially on every like inch of the walls on the second and third floor. I didn't, I didn't like seeing it. I probably wouldn't have, I wouldn't have uh, objected to it as much if it was on a lower scale. I wouldn't mind it as much. I probably would have taken a look at it, observed it, and probably would, have, might probably would have given my thoughts about it. I wouldn't have such a negative approach to it if it was on every, every wall that I go on every day. When you see it on such a huge scale, it just gives you this initial reaction that like it's intended the intention is not to honor the soul, because the intention is to shock you. I think that it's awesome, I, this memorial. I think that it needs to be this big. It needs to be in your face. It has to be. Like, a lot of people, when we were putting it up, people were like, oh my god, what are people going to think? The Republicans are going to be really upset. People are going to be shocked and really upset about this. So what? Like, you have to be upset. Why, why shouldn't we be upset that all these innocent people are being killed? 
we should be upset by it, and if we're not, then we should recognize it so that we become upset about it so that we can want to do something to change it. Because like I said before, it stinks for us because this is our generation and this is now going to be in our hands. And if people don't care about it and don't have things in their face this big on such a large scale, seeing it and feeling upset about it, then nothing is going to ever change because it, like, who else is going to fix it? Like, we're the people in this country. We're going, like, this is our generation. It's happening during our time. We have to do something about it. Otherwise, nothing can be done. Because it's so much, it almost feels like you're being manipulated mm -hmm. to go to one yeah. side. But, like, I mean, everything in life, that's such a big deal. Like, there's big things and small things. And it's just, like, another emotion to experience and after you feel it, after like the shock is worn off, you start to synthesize why were you so like, you know, either insulted by it being in your face or why you thought it was so great to see this. Like, you know, it's like opening your eyes or it's like forcing you to wake up. But um, I didn't find it offensive. Like, when I was looking at it, I was happy it was there because I don't, I don't like looking at most of the junk that's on our walls in school. And this, like, it seemed like so, like, so, like, you know, connected to the rest of the world, like, because obviously this is a private school and it's very small and most of the things people think about are nowhere on this level. And it's just like, because it's there, I feel like it's making me want to do something about it. Like, you know, it, it's, it's almost, it's like inspiring. I don't, I don't want anyone I know when I'm older to be a face on a wall. Because you're, people talk about how no longer there's statistics, there's a face to numbers. But like, um, I know a lot of times like if you draw something, it's like doodles of face. This just seems like a bunch of pieces of paper with faces on it triggering some sort of emotion. Like, it's just, it's not, it's still not real. I can't, uh, my mind just is not able to comprehend bodies being there. Like. And because I don't understand it, it's like, and it's so, so much, and it's causing so much pain, it can't be a good thing. So what I want to do about it is I don't want it to happen ever, like, at least, or I want to do as much as I can to stop it from happening again if I can. No, I, I didn't want to come to school on a Monday morning and have to be depressed to see how people die during the war. I want, I, it's just another way of making my Mondays even worse. You don't want to come to school to be depressed, but I think that, like, honestly, that's such a small thing. Like, even though we are going to be upset by this, like, we we don't feel it as much as, like, that man's wife or his daughter or something. We don't feel it. And, I mean, a lot of us probably don't know people in the war who have died, and we're never going to have that feeling. And I think being depressed for three days that it's up in our school and having, like, the slightest bit of feeling that so many other people are really, really experiencing, I think it's worth it. And I think that maybe if that's what it takes, for everyone to feel like a little depressed for three days. No, I mean, I've, I've talked to my friends about it. We've talked, you know, about what the message is and stuff. And I mean, actually, like what you said, you know, it's not about pro war or anti war, but I feel like, and it shouldn't be. It definitely shouldn't be. And I think that's the point of an exhibit like this is to not be pro war or anti war. It's just to show these are the people, here's what they did. They died for what they believed in. We should respect them and we should honor them for their sacrifice. But I just feel like it, it has such an intense like anti-war connotation to it that I feel like it sort of corrupted the message of the exhibit in of itself. How am I as part, I want to be part of the society when I'm older, but like how am I going to fit into a world where so much bad is done and it's so everyday, like, like even this in the hallway, this is just like it's going to be something and then it'll be gone. And I, I guess I need to think about this a little bit more. When I first stepped in and I just saw all these faces, it was just like, oh wow. Like, just, just initial shock about, especially our classroom walls and just being used to what's usually in the hall. And it was, it was definitely uh, conflicting um, emotions. My two conflicting emotions were one to be 
either feel sadly about what's going on in the war and the things, the casualties of war and what has to be the cost of some people like in our country making decisions about um, what they feel is the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And my supporting the people that are there, like I always feel that I will support what the people that are fighting for us, not necessarily what the people that are making the decisions are doing, but the people that are willing to um, necessarily protect or serve for our country. So those are kind of the two conflicting emotions. On the first day after, by the end of the day, you're kind of wrapped up in your academics right. and you don't necessarily have necessarily all the time to pay attention to them, but I feel that every time that I do see one of the pictures, it does make me think for however long that I have time to think about what's going on in our country and what's going on in other countries and what we are doing. If it wasn't there, then I don't think that I would be thinking about it as much as I have. In the I took time to look at their names, see where they're coming from, see who they're survived by, and their ages. Mm -hmm. The age was definitely um, one of the things that we paid attention to. What because, specifically, yeah? Like, me being 17 and some, someone 19, someone 20, that's not that far away from me, right. so you could just like picture yourself like, oh, I could, in a few years, be in the same situation as them. Well, not necessarily myself being in a situation, but just relate to them age-wise, or maybe they came from Brooklyn, New York, or Manhattan, so. I haven't really talked to people about it because I think that generally there's been a very good reaction to it and um, I really don't agree. <laughs> you hear that this many people have died during the war for this, you know, this cause that is not necessarily good, and, which I totally agree with. I don't think it's a good cause. I'm completely against the war. Um, and that when you see the faces and read the stories, like who have they been survived by and how old they were when they died, that that really has more of an effect on you than hearing the number. Mm -hmm. Which makes sense. Um, I don't think that's a good thing. And I see this outside and Yes, you're making it more personal, you're seeing their stories, and that is just, to me, that is extremely disrespectful to the memories of those people. Because they aren't people anymore, they're a cause. You make it more effective, but you don't make it more effective that we feel bad for them, you make it more effective that we feel bad that their lives were sacrificed for something that we don't believe in. And that just really, I mean, we don't know them. We have no right to mourn them. Even to me, when I hear the number on the news, it's, that is, first of all, it's, it's not disrespectful to them as people because you don't hear, like, this person died and was survived by their two-year-old. I mean, it's tragic, but when I hear the number, the fact that I can't really comprehend that that many people died for something that I don't believe in and were, you know, that they might not have had a choice, you know. Just the fact that I can't comprehend it makes it that much more important for me. I think that the way to mourn that part without being disrespectful, disrespectful mm -hmm. to them as people is to hear the, like, 3,500 or uh, on the news or oh, to okay. hear that, you know, a bomb went off in this place and this many soldiers died and like, Jesus, that many soldiers died. The alternative is to have them on the news, not the people, like, I mean, it's, I totally understand it, and I think it's with the best intentions that, you know, you have the pictures and the stories and the, you know, I think it's, it's in good, intentions, I can tell. Mm -hmm. But I think that the way to do it is the way that has been done, I hate to say this, but by the media, because I'm not usually a supporter of our media. Just having, having the numbers come back, or having like every day consistently, when I watch the nightly news, seeing that there are more people dying every day, that in itself is 
really scary to me and really makes an impact on me. And so doing that has an impact. And so having them doing more on top of that and taking their faces and their stories and their families and pulling that into it just seems like you're causing more grief to the families. It's disrespectful to their memories. I think that maybe what you were trying to say is, are we trying to connect with them on a personal level that we don't know about them or that it's their family's yeah. position to do because we're not their family necessarily? Personally, I would be extremely offended if a member of my family was up there. I suppose it is a memorial, but I think more than that, it's, from what I can tell, it's about getting a message across. It's not so much about uh, remembering them as people, it's remembering what they died for. I guess I, I was sort of prepared for it, but not completely. I didn't realize there's one hallway upstairs where it's just everywhere on either side of you. And it's kind of hard to describe the way I felt. It, I imagine it's something like being haunted. And then I started to go around and read them. And I just, there's no way I could read them all or even look at them all. Like some of them are, you know, places I can't reach, but even if I could get to all of them, there's so many. And I kind of feel like I'm failing them because I can't look at them all. And there are also some that stood out. Like there was a girl who died when she was the age I am now, when she was 18. So I, it's kind of strange to think about. Mm -hmm. And there's also a girl who, there's a, it's a personal picture, so she's dressed up and it looks like, you know, she looks like a prom queen, you know. Mm. She looks like a, a girl who's just going to go off and do all these great things. Well, it wasn't just that she was female, it's just that she was so young mm. and she was, she looked like, you know, she was going to her high school prom. I guess particular faces, but also just the, the feeling of walking down that mm. hallway with both sides of me, kind of like, I think it's too easy for people to just, you know, hide in their sports pages and not pay attention to it at all. It's not something that should be pushed aside the way it has been. And I'm extremely grateful for all of your hard work in bringing this to the school. I think it's a, it's a very provocative and... Provocative is a very good word. Very brave and... Um, uh, I think it's, just, it's a... Um, a very, very forthright thing, thing to have done. I think it's... I, I really commend you on your... what well, must be a lot of hard work. And I said that what... I'd felt in walking around the corridors here these, these last three days is I felt angry. Um, and I felt angry since the war began. I remember feeling just boiling up inside when Britain decided to join the war. There, 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 there I was, I was, I was, I was t teaching in, in England at the time. I've been in the States now for two and a half years. But what was this girl today in, in class she said she said something she just she just I mean, she just didn't she didn't make any um, any <coughs> she didn't make any judging statement she just said that her brother had recently passed into the marines and that she was very worried that he might join those faces on the wall as a teacher i don't wish to impose my politics on on others you have to be very very careful. You, you might upset some kids. Um, I asked the kids on Monday morning, it's my little ninth grade advisees, what they thought, what their initial reactions to it were. A couple of them said that they were upset by it, that they didn't want to be reminded of all this death, that it was enough to read the figures in the newspaper and, and 
be informed of it in that way. They felt rather jarred by it, I think, initially. Um, it's taken a little while to, to get the kids to come out and speak about it. Um, and I'd like to ask them at the, the end of the week when they've had the time for these images to, to settle in. I think it, it, it stirs one to have emotions. And I think it's of what you've what you've done is is a is a, a provocative thing, but it's not overtly political what you're doing. If you were to, to hang "Let's End the War" banners around the school, yes, that's 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 a political act. Um, but students and adults and whoever can make of it what they will, because. It's asking one to confront these images of those who have fallen in service of their country or in service of freedom or, or, in, or in, in serving whatever cause we are fighting for in, in, in Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, it's not denouncing the war, it's not saying we, we, should, we should withdraw our troops, but it's stirring kids to talk about it. Um, I said today in, in meeting, I said, you can think of these pictures as you will, but it's an arresting sight. For all of us, when we came into the building on Monday morning, we were arrested by these images. It stirs us to say something about them. I hope that you will stop in the corridor on your way to and from class and shake your friend and say, what do you think of this? Um, and whatever, uh, opinion you might have have a have about them is 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 is, is no matter really. It's what's important it's is that you disgusting. you are jarred and you're provoked to speak. And I've heard them. You you, you overhear a conversation. You know, you hear a, a, a <coughs> ninth grade girl uh, in passing or so stopped. It. She stopped at one picture and said, "This soldier never even met his child. Mm. His child was born before he before he came home." And they, they do, they stop. Leah, I, I think you should just recap for, for us how, you know, how this whole thing started. When you, when you came to Brooklyn, you saw the, the panels, you would think, yeah. did you immediately think of anyone just talking? Yeah, over, over work. Over yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, my initial reaction to it was, well, I got up early the Sunday morning just to go volunteer at the Brooklyn Parents, uh, Brooklyn Peace Fair. And I, it was not really in my mind at all that anything could come out of it at the beginning of the day. And um, I guess I was going to also help with the other exhibit, the, I forgot what it's called, but it's the one with the boots. The boots, it's a Quaker one actually, that one. Yeah. The boots, yeah. Yeah, so originally I was going to do that and then they sent me to help you guys. And um, I, I just was really um, taken aback by it. And... I guess the numbers, for me anyway, the numbers, they do justice, but I felt like they, were, they weren't enough. And then to see all of those faces, and, I, and even while putting it up, I didn't really think about it. It was more just like, let's all work together and put it up. And um, with the other volunteers who were really great. Mm -hmm. and, and then at the end, once we were all done, we kind of stood back from it for a second. And in that moment, I realized like, wow. This is it was the perfect place for it because it was just stretching, 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 yeah, you know. It went on all forever. the outdoor space, yeah. And it was just really it was frightening but at the same time like really powerful to see that. And I guess then the next week we had Quaker meeting and I was thinking of saying something, but I didn't ever say anything about it. And I kind of had wished that someone else from our school could have been there to see it. And that's when I kind of got in touch with you. I think, I, I don't remember the order of events, but I brought it up with the Peace and Social Action Group and um, Dory Dietz, she kind of said, oh, you should pursue it, see what happens. And so I then uh, used the sheet that I had and emailed you and then that's kind of, I guess, mm -hmm. how it started. But um, originally I didn't have that intention mm -hmm. until I realized that, I mean, the, seeing that that like moment where I just I was amazed by it. like I didn't know even how to react almost and like I felt even if I could share my experience with just some of the students that would be good. Mm -hmm. I guess my main goal for this exhibit um, was to get students talking and make them more aware 
the the outcome of whether they completely reject the memorial or love it. I mean, that was a risk that um, everyone was taking, but I felt like the most important was just to get students talking because I feel like sometimes, like, and I include myself in this completely, like, we can get really caught up in just everyday life and forget that there are all these, like, bigger things that are going on in the world, like the genocide in Darfur and just there's so many things going on and I think it's really important to recognize that. I was surprised by um, the range of opinion. Well, talk, can, you, can you talk about what that range was? Because um, you heard more of it than we did today. Yeah, um, actually in the Harlem Renaissance class that I guess Jamal and Gwen spoke about earlier, um, that, was, that was kind of the moment where there was real tension within the group. And um, one student thought, well, like war is kind of human nature and like we have to support it if it's going on. And then another student was like, no way, like that's such a cynical way of looking at things. Like it, war doesn't ha have to happen. And this is, and plus like then we got into thinking about, well, what are the real reasons for why we are at war? And just, and it kind of spiraled into a discussion from there but um, and people got really passionate about it and I, I was excited to see the passion in it in the discussion some people feel like the memorial this was what I was kind of surprised by that it's they were completely offended by the memorial and I was hoping that no one would be offended because that wasn't that wasn't my intention at all and what, what were they offended by exactly um they were offended that we were possibly like glorifying it, we're not glorifying, but by putting faces on the wall, it was like a celebration, not a celebration, I don't know, it's hard to, I didn't fully understand it. In a way, I feel like it would be better if we had the consent of the families to do this. And I think the third floor, I mean, if you look at that wall going all the way down, because that's the largest flat space we have, right. and that's pretty powerful. So. The hardest thing for me personally was the risk involved. Like I had no idea. Like at the beginning, I was thinking, like, wow, I really want to share my experience. Not not that I was thinking everyone was going to have a similar experience, but I wanted to share this with the community. And I thought also it's appropriate because we are a Quaker school, and as a Quaker institution, um, we do believe in peace and nonviolence. And so I thought this is a powerful thing and it would be great if it could come to our school. Um, but then as it got closer and closer, I started to have a few, like some doubts about it. And um, my main concern was um, how the students were gonna react. And um, overall, I think it was good to do. I really, I mean, no, not everyone was, is going to agree. Especially on opening night, um, we had. Oh yeah, we haven't talked about yeah, that. Yeah, we had about ten people come through. And who were they? Were they parents um, or others? parents? And then um, a few people who had heard about it in the other building. Or yeah, so it was a mix of um, people. And then one from who works at Friends Seminary, which is a Quaker school in the city. Um, and then it was like everything was quiet, and so it was really it presented a whole different aspect. And Lizzie was there. Um, she helped me and stayed with me. It was me. dark, it was late as well, right? And it, yeah, it had a different feel to it completely. And how, it was, how did, did it feel it was, warm? It was a little bit, yeah, it was a lot, even more like wrenching kind of than scary. The reaction that we heard was people saying things like, I wish there was less of it. I wish it wasn't on every wall. It was just everywhere. And, um, you know, I don't know if that was somehow threatening to people in some way, especially the boys. Yeah. I don't know. Do you have any thoughts about that? Um, you know? I'm not sure. I feel like because it color, like we contained it to the hallways, which I think is really good. Um, we didn't put it in any, any classrooms no. and we did that. On, or on the stairs. Right? Yeah. And I think the stairs, by having the stairs be like how they normally are, that kind of it's a time where when you're transitioning between floors it gives you a moment to kind yeah. of um, step back from it, I guess. Um, I think it's that's part of the exhibit, is to show the quantity right. of 
faces. But I'm just wondering what you think for those people who are saying, I wish it was less, I wish it wasn't everywhere, couldn't they have contained it, couldn't they have made it just one floor? What do you yeah. think was going on for, for them when they were saying that? Um, I don't know, maybe, I guess, maybe some fear of just the, the quantity, because it is a scary idea. Um, and I guess if it was contained to just a room, they wouldn't have to... S like it wouldn't stare at them as much, so they. This was very in your face. Is yeah. What's some one of the words somebody used? Yeah, and I think that's kind of what the point of this was right. to show, like, hey guys, look, this is what's happening. Yeah. This is one of the things that is happening in the world. And that's the thing is they did understand that they got it, but then yeah. they wanted to run away from it, and they couldn't. There was no shelter right. kind of thing, you know. Right. I think that's what it was. I think that's about. also why I. I've, I think three days is like the perfect amount you, of time. You're absolutely right about that. I had no idea what you were talking about yeah. when you first suggested yeah. it. And so the other thing, so what has been the best thing for you? I mean, do you feel it's not quite over yet? Yeah, I guess the best thing is having people come up to me and kind of, I've been several teachers um, also that I've had because I've been here from kindergarten. So several teachers from the middle school and um, other places have just kind of come up to me and said like, this is great what you're doing and like people are really surprised by how much in initiative you're willing to take and I guess that that's one of the best things about mm. it and then also just hearing the conversation like today in class like I was really happy I mean although it's like not we're not having they're not agreeing but the disagreement is kind of what I am like proud about is that kids teenagers care enough to speak their mind and you know, they're aware to some degree of what's going on in the world. No, I think it'll definitely stick with people. I mean, it stuck with me long enough that I decided to yeah. pursue it. And next time they see the, the number, the new number from Iran, yeah, it'll, 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 they'll, they'll connect it to the faces, you know. Yeah. Good. My name is Dory Dietz. I'm the, I work, I've worked at Brooklyn Friends School for the past 23 years. I was born and raised a Quaker, and I'm the advisor for the Peace and Social Action Committee, of which Leah is a member. And when Leah proposed after the Brooklyn Parents for Peace Day in the fall, when she proposed that we bring the exhibit, the North Fork People of Conscience exhibit to Brooklyn Friends, I thought that was a fabulous idea. I knew it would be a lot of work and I was concerned, not concerned, I knew that I was aware that it would bring controversy and sort of discussion among students and I think that that's a very powerful thing to do for teenagers and for other people as well because the pictures themselves to put a face on every person who's died in this war is a very powerful reminder of what war does to human beings. I think the reality of the exhibit was a little different than I had expected. Maybe I'm not sure quite what I expected but once all the posters were up. It was incredibly powerful to see like face after face after face after face and to realize that every single one of these people, these young people and older people, had left behind somebody that they cared about and that they loved and who loved them. And I think it just put a human face onto what I feel is a is not only a controversial war, but a war based on falsehood. The best thing about the three days, I think, was having those people present in our community and also hearing the reaction of students who had been warned but also had no idea what it would really be like. And their reactions ranged from being, you know, this is really terrible, this makes me very unhappy, to I think it's time that we recognized who people are who were killed and that we recognize that this war is not a good thing for our country. I wasn't either surprised or disappointed about the reactions that people had because I was expecting a wide range of reactions. I think what upset me most was seeing how many people had died who were older, whom I felt did not want to go into this war, who were members perhaps of the National Guard or members of the reserves who never expected to go back, and also people who never expected to go in the first place. It's not like this is a draft war the way Vietnam was, where everybody's been sent. It, was, it just happened. And I think for the, the reaction in terms of our community, it just was so varied that it, it was 
I both expected it and yet was a little in awe of it. The minute you can get people talking about something, I think that's where the power in an exhibit like this lies. I'm not sure whether it will have a long-term effect on kids. I think that sometimes things like this percolate and last inside a long time, but they may never come out. It may never come out as something verbal or not verbal, but in the long run, I think it will have some effect. I just don't know what that effect will be. I don't want that. That's fine. People often ask us, why do we do this? Why do we update, maintain this memorial, the Honor the Fallen Memorial? It is, after all, a huge amount of work. The answer is simple. We want people to understand the consequences of war. We want them to know that death and injury are the inevitable ramifications of war and that war kills real people, people just like us, and destroys families just like ours. We want people to face the war. We have learned that the pictures and the words describing each dead soldier speak for themselves, loudly and clearly enough to allow each viewer's ears to hear their message. We have learned that we ourselves are unnecessary. We have learned that the exhibition's most important power comes from offering a place for unimpeded, unmediated meditation and reflection. We have learned that the exhibition is at its most powerful when we allow it to be simply a memorial rather than to shape it into a conduit, subtle or not, for anti-war or other messages. We have learned that the less weight we place on the pictures, the more they are freed to tell their own story. We have seen that we should be no more than presenters, that it is not for us to intervene in the relationship between the viewer and the panels. When we remove ourselves from this relationship, we free the viewer to engage in a personal reflection on the loss of life unfolded before him or her, a reflection that is as personal as the action that may follow from it. If we remember what we have learned, we will fulfill our purpose to bring to full consciousness the consequences of war.